This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about not only how ETH holders are in big trouble, but how this entire project is currently entering a perfect storm. I think I finally put all these pieces together, and I think you're going to be very shocked what you learn if you watch this video all the way to the end. So Ethereum is almost certainly moving to proof of stake sometime in the next 20 to 30 days. And when that happens, the largest entities will be the largest validators and stakers on the network when it makes this move. And this is going to be exchanges like Coinbase and Kraken, and it will be staking services like Lido. Now, all of these are large regulated entities that have registered with the US government and that need to comply with regulations. And so if regulators like OFAC tell them to go out there and censor an ETH address or an ETH transaction, they need to do it or risk losing their government licenses. And we've seen with the whole tornado cash disaster that these large entities will do whatever the US government tells them to do. If we take a look at the Beacon chain validators, which are the guys, these large groups doing proof of stake already on the Beacon chain, which will eventually merge with the main chain in Ethereum, over 66% of the validators there, which is sort of the equivalent of miners, have said that they will adhere to OFAC regulations. And this includes Lido, as we said, Coinbase, Kraken, etc. And so we discussed this in a video two days ago where uh, Left Risk Karepetsas asked Brian Armstrong at Coinbase, if regulators ask you to censor Ethereum at the protocol level, in other words, to, to censor certain addresses or certain transactions, will you comply and censor or will you shut down your staking service and preserve the network integrity? We already talked about Armstrong's response, which was a little bit of a weasel answer saying that we hopefully we would uh, go with B and we would unstake everything but we might just sue them instead. And he adds this weasel word, I think. We do know that Coinbase went along with the most recent OFAC regulations, and so we can assume that they will continue to comply with the government. Now, Coinbase has two choices if asked to, be, to censor transactions by government regulators. The case that Brian Armstrong says he's going to, going to pursue is he, say, he says, we're not going to censor anything. We'd rather return the ETH to its retail holders, to its original holders, rather than censor anything. The only problem with this is that there's no way to currently do this because ETH devs have decided to lock up everyone's staked ETH for six to 12 months. It probably will be even longer than that, knowing how slowly Ethereum moves after the merge. And so if the merge happens this September, Coinbase would not be able to return any, any stake coins to individuals until September of 2023. So even if Coinbase wanted to return its staked ETH and not censor transactions, wanted to return the staked ETH to its individual holders, there will be no way to do it because the devs do not allow you to unstake at this point. And this shows you the, the uh, power that the devs have in the Ethereum ecosystem. It's quite different under, under the Bitcoin system. So if Coinbase cannot unstake its ETH in the first six to 12 months, and it cannot because it's not yet written into, into the code by the Ethereum devs, it will probably be forced to censor transactions. If it can unstake and return the coins, it's going to have to go along with OFAC regulations. And so it's going to be in the, in the business of censoring things that the government wants censored. If you're enjoying this video so far and learning something from it, please hit that subscribe button. I've noticed there are a lot of people who view my channel regularly who are not subscribers. So it would really help out the channel growth if you could hit that subscribe button. Here's another confirmation. Staked, or, or, uh, staked ETH will not be unlocked at the merge. The merge won't enable withdrawals. This is planned for another Ethereum upgrade, which may take place six to 12 months after the merge. So this is what we were just talking about before. So if asked to censor transactions by the government or to do the government's bidding, Coinbase has two choices. We just talked about the first choice, which is to return all stake coins to individual users of Coinbase. They can't do that, at least in the first six to 12 months, because the code does not allow them to do it. The Ethereum code does not allow them to do it. The other option is they can just go ahead and censor the transaction, which is what they'll probably do, since Coinbase is very good at doing the US government's bidding. In which case, if they censor the transaction, you have just lost the main use case for crypto and ETH. It just becomes another state controlled coin at this point. And at that point, you might as well just be using US dollars because both of them can be censored. But you're not going to believe how much worse it actually 
gets. So if Coinbase censors an Ethereum transaction, and it looks like they will have to do it simply because they're not going to be able to unstake, that's like that's physically impossible or impossible under the current code. If Coinbase censors an Ethereum transaction, Vitalik has recently vowed to slash its stake. So this is what happens if you're a validator and you don't do your job, you get some of your coins uh, clawed back and or burned. So the, here's the article, Buterin is ready to burn validator stakes via social consensus if they tolerate censorship. He has publicly shown that he considers the underway censorship as an attack on the Ethereum network. He said he's ready to burn stakes of validators such as Coinbase, Lido, and Kraken if they decide to comply with regulators and censor at the protocol level. So Coinbase is in this weird, very weird position. They cannot unstake. They will probably be forced to censor. And if they do censor, they will get their coins slashed. In other words, they'll get some of their coins burned. So what happens then? If Vitalik destroys some ETH held by Coinbase because they censored a transaction, if he does this as punishment for censorship, guess who suffers? All the little guys and gals who have staked their ETH through Coinbase. All the small holders get to say goodbye to some of the ETH that was staked at Coinbase and say goodbye to some of their ETH savings. It's going to be burned by Vitalik. I'm gonna to link to two uh, pages on the Coinbase help website to really drive this point home. Coinbase says, uh, this is from Coinbase, Coinbase has taken measures to minimize the risk of slashing. That's what we're talking about, where a portion of the stake gets burned. However, slashing can be caused by events outside of our control. That could lead to the loss of staked ETH. So if you're staking ETH at Coinbase, I'm not sure you can even get out, uh, but if you, if you stay there, there's a risk that you are going to get slashed. Now, if you start staking prior to August 30th, 2021, Coinbase will, will replace any ETH lost to slashing at no additional cost. If you are lucky enough to do that, perhaps you will do well, uh, though I think ETH is down quite a bit in price since then. But if you started staking your ETH after August 30th, 2021, some conditions apply. Please refer to the terms, blah, blah, blah. If we go there, we can see that uh, Coinbase will use, this is the fine print, which you have to read under slashing penalties. I'll, I'll link to this below as well. Coinbase will co use commercially reasonable efforts to protect against slashing incidents. However, however in the event of slashing, Coinbase will replace your assets so long as such penalties are not the result of protocol level failures at the Ethereum level itself caused by bugs, maintenance, upgrades, or general failure, your acts or emissions, acts or emissions of any third party service provider, a force majeure event, blah, 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 acts by a hacker, or, and here's number six, any other events outside of Coinbase's reasonable control. So you can be certain if you get slashed, if Coinbase gets slashed, they are not going to make you whole. You're gonna lose an equivalent percentage of your holdings that Coinbase lost of their holdings. So what are you supposed to do if you're a small ETH holder? Maybe the best thing to do is just don't stake at Coinbase or Lido or Kraken or one of these large regulated entities. What's the main problem with this? Well, if you wanna stake the coins yourself, you need 32 ETH. That's about $52,000 today in, um, in fiat in fiat value. And the problem with this, if we look at, at the United States, which is a, a quite wealthy country, uh, co especially compared globally, for 30 year olds and under, the median savings rate is about $3,000. For 40 years and under, the median savings rate is about four or $5,000. The average obviously skews higher because wealthier people with really large net, net worths uh, skew the average. But if you look at the median, for these, these age groups, which is, are the age groups that are mostly interested in crypto, if you're over 50 or 60, you're not as into crypto, though you're probably probably wealthier, we have median savings somewhere between three and $5,000. To stake ETH, you need $52,000. So this is why I say that this is rapidly becoming a coin for the rich. By contrast with Bitcoin, if you wanna run a node, you just need an old laptop, which is uh, basically doesn't cost anything or a Raspberry Pi, if you want to become a Bitcoin miner, you can get an ASIC for a few a few thousand dollars. So we can really see the difference uh, the difference here. And again, it's the it's the small nodes, it's the full nodes that run and control Bitcoin ultimately. Not even not even the miners. But the problem here is under proof of stake, which is what Ethereum's moving to. The validators have all of this control. So in order to stake yourself, if you don't want to risk getting slashed at Coinbase because they're going to get slashed because they're going to censor transactions and they're going to have to censor transactions because they cannot unstake their ETH. 
if you want to stake your own ETH, you need 32 ETH, so you need about 50 grand at current prices. And you also need to be technically competent enough to figure out how to do it safely, how not to lose your ETH in the process. So many smallholders of ETH may conclude maybe it's just a good idea not to stake your ETH at a large entity and also not to stake it yourself. If you stake it at a large entity, you're probably going to get slashed. If you stake it yourself, well, you might not be able to unless you have 50, 50 grand and you might mess things up. So why not just hodl your ETH without staking it anywhere? Just put it on a hardware wallet and go your merry way and hold it for 10 years. Well, there's a problem with that too. If you don't stake your ETH, you get slowly diluted and poorer compared to everyone else who does stake their ETH since those who have staked their ETH are earning new coins and you are not. So your share of the pie is rapidly diminishing. This is how Ethereum is just like fiat where the rich get richer and get to control a larger and larger part of the financial system. You could own 40% of the Bitcoin miners and you would still have no control over the system. You could own 80% of all the Bitcoin out there and you would still have no additional control over the protocol because Bitcoin is proof of work under proof of stake, which is what Ethereum is moving to. The more coins you have, the more control you have. So you can see why wealthy Ethereans and, and, and beneficiaries of the pre-mine and the pre-sale are really excited about this because they're basically recreating the unfair fiat system. As I just said, Ethereum already suffers from the lack of neutrality caused by this huge pre-mine where you have these shadowy figures who are driving everything in order to increase their bags and also to dump their bags on naive retail investors. And now Ethereum is moving to proof of stake where it is guaranteed that it will become a coin that has been captured by the government. The government will completely control under proof of stake, will completely control the large regulated entities that are the largest stakers on Ethereum. So the government, US government and other governments will basically control the protocol. They will have veto power over any ETH address and ETH transaction that they want. This is the this is the disaster that Ethereum is. And they're walking straight into this, having seen what happened with Tornado Cash, and they're still deciding to move to proof of stake. Now, unlike Ethereum, Bitcoin is actually censorship resistant. It was built to withstand these kind of attacks. OFAC, so you may ask what, what happens in a proof of work situation here with the Bitcoin miners if OFAC tries to exert pressure. And again, OFAC is just a sub-department of the U.S. Treasury that is in charge of doing stuff like um, censoring, censoring uh, North Korean hackers and Iranian hackers. And they usually go after individuals and, and terrorist groups uh, or groups that are labeled as terrorist groups. In this case, they censored an actual protocol, which was Tornado Cash. But either way, if OFAC tries to go after Bitcoin, they can try to pressure large regulated US Bitcoin miners not to include a transaction in a block. But then what's going to happen is just another smaller Bitcoin miner, either in the US or elsewhere, will include it. And no one will have any idea who even mined the block unless they're stupid enough to, to put in the block uh, that they mined it. Now, as a transactor on the Bitcoin network, it's always possible to raise your transaction fee to the point where it becomes economically irresistible for a miner somewhere to include it in the next block. And so even if they don't want to include it uh, to begin with, you can always keep raising your transaction fee and eventually you will make it into a block just because of basic economic greed. The other nice thing about Bitcoin mining is it really thrives on cheap energy, stranded energy that no one else can use. Maybe uh, an old natural gas well that's being vented or or stranded hydroelectric power, for example, or stranded solar power. Cheap energy, stranded energy is found all over the world. And as such, Bitcoin miners can be scattered all around the world, harnessing it, and they can be in every country around the world. So this also helps with the decentralization of Bitcoin mining. Now, a lot of people will show you a pie chart, which shows that something like the top three or four Bitcoin mining pools control more than 50% of the hash rate. The thing that people miss when it comes to this is these mining pools are very ephemeral things. As a Bitcoin miner, you can point your hash to any mining pool that you want. And if a mining pool goes rogue or becomes captured by the state, if one of these large Bitcoin mining companies in the US becomes captured and begins to comply with regulators and censor transactions, what good Bitcoin miners will do is they will stop pointing their hash to those mining pools. And even if the large 
uh, mining groups in the US are captured, the large miners are captured, there will still be miners all around the world. They can form and reform mining pools. So a mining pool is built up of individual miners. Individual miners own the actual ASICs. So this is a very robust system. And if a couple mining pools get together, they try to do a 51% attack, all the underlying miners who own the underlying ASICs will point their hash to a different pool. So this is this is how Bitcoin was designed. It's a really beautiful thing. This is Ethereum has been running on proof of work quite wisely. The problem they have is their proof of work has always been much weaker and their hash rate much weaker than Bitcoin. They're always Bitcoin's little brother. So I think this is part of the reason they're moving to proof of stake because they simply cannot compete with Bitcoin mining and uh, the proof of work system simply because Bitcoin had this huge head start over Ethereum. So mining is not a problem. It's very, very difficult to capture miners. And even if you did, if you captured all the miners, what you would basically do is you would have all the full nodes would decide to ride, uh, route around them. And uh, it's really the full nodes who are in, ch in charge and in control of the Bitcoin network. So if a mining pool goes rogue or becomes captured by a state or by captured by regulators, good Bitcoin miners will instantly point their hash elsewhere to a new mining pool, another mining pool. So this is yet another reason why proof of work is so much more robust and censorship resistant than proof of stake. As we've shown in this video, proof of stake leads to more and more centralization. As beneficiaries of the ETH pre-mine get more coins, the more coins you have, the more coins you get under proof of stake. And also all the crypto exchanges like Kraken and Coinbase and staking services like Lido get more coins. So these large wealthy groups get wealthier and they get more power. As I've been saying for years, Ethereum is a foundation of sand. It's not immune to state level attacks. It's not immune to censorship. And the problem with DeFi, though DeFi has some very cool stuff going on, as I've talked about over the years, DeFi was built mostly on this foundation of sand, which is Ethereum. You cannot build a decentralized financial system on a level one protocol that is about to be captured or has already been captured and controlled either by the state or by its oligarchic founders and original beneficiaries of the pre-mine. Ethereans are going to learn these lessons the hard way. Perhaps they should have listened to their cypherpunks and older Bitcoin brothers a bit more. Ethereum has basically been designed for a very neutral, friendly government environment. And as things go south in this decade, and the government exerts more and more control or tries to exert more and more control over crypto protocols, Ethereum is just not built to survive this. It will become captured. This is absolutely guaranteed. Ethereum is not designed to be able to withstand nation state level attacks. End of discussion. Ethereans can fantasize about a flippening, but their design choices over the years and now this move to proof of stake have doomed the protocol to becoming a captured controlled coin. And I have to say, this is a beautiful cluster plunk, we'll call it, to watch. Watching ETH, it's completely surreal. Watching ETH move to proof of stake just a few weeks after Tornado Cash got censored. The writing's on the wall here, and yet it looks like Ethereum is going to go ahead and do this anyway. If I were one of the Greek uh, playwrights like Sophocles or Euripides, I could not have designed a more interesting plot than what we're seeing, and when this is why I keep covering the same topic, in which the gods drive Ethereans mad and cause them to destroy their own project in real time, to rush to embrace to embrace the state and regulators by moving to proof of stake. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.